So now basically guys in this tutorial we will be building a complete application which is jQuery full calendar integration with PHP and MySQL and we will be using Ajax in the background so you can see that this is the application we are displaying the calendar here with the help of full calendar library it is a jQuery library and uh, you can just click on the element here on a particular date and you can even add a event let's suppose I add an event Diwali and click OK you can see that it is prompting me add it successfully you can see that I can click again and I can remove it also so you can see that event removed if I show you the table once again if I add an event this is my table let me just show you this is events you can see that if I refresh it it will show you me the entries which are, which are available you can see that two entries are there and this is a start event date and this is end event date and I can even update the entry by just dragging it you can see that you can see that event updated and if I check the database so you will see that the dates will be updated here so this is a very simple application that you can make here and if you refresh it all the data will be there you need not have to uh, add the event again and again so this is a very simple application so in, in your calendar also you can just uh, view your date in three formats either you can just view it in inside month monthly wise or you can just view it weekly wise you can see that these are the times these are the dates you can see that either you can if add the event here or you can just view it day wise so you can see that these are the buttons number five six seven eight if you press here add the event okay so it is added at 730 here if you want to remove it press it again and it will remove it so if you click the today button it will be having the today's date which is November 3rd 2019 so this is a simple full calendar application that we will be building in this tutorial and the full source code of this application is there in the video description or you can just go to my website codingsiksha.com slash javascript slash this is a link there in the video description so this is the whole code which is there so you can just copy paste this code here and now let, let's start building this application so now the first step in building this application guys go to php my admin and create a new database so click on the new button and here you need to create a database let's suppose i create full calendar you can just name it anything you want and inside it we will be creating a table which is events it will be having four columns and uh, just name it here so this is the original table that we had here if i show you the table it has four fields ID title start event and end event so we will be having the same table in our let me define the table name once again so first will be ID so this will be integer type and it will be the primary key of the table so just press this auto increment after that we will be having our name I I check that it is name it is name so it will be watch or and this will be 250 characters and this will be start event it will be date time so it will be holding the date and time so just select here date time and this will be end event this will also be date time after that save the table so this is your table here this is a structure this is ID which is the primary key it is auto incremented second is name of the event third is start event which is actual date time whenever the event started and the fourth one is end event this is also a date time so this is the table for the application 
So now just start building the application. Go to your text editor and create the index.php file inside your directory and then write this code. Give it a title that is jQuery full calendar integration with PHP and MySQL and then we will be grabbing the CSS part for the application full calendar.css. After that we will be grabbing the CDN for the bootstrap CSS. So all this is available in the video description. So just go to the source code and grab this. And then we will be grabbing the CDN for jQuery. You can see that jQuery min.js. And then we will be grabbing the jQuery user interface dot min.js. This is also necessary. And lastly, we have the moment JS file moment dot min.js. So this is also required for this application. And lastly, we are fetching the full calendar dot min.js. So this is a JavaScript file. And now inclu after including this, we will be having our body. We will close the body. And also we will close the head and close the HTML. So inside the body, we, we just want to display a suitable. First of all, we will be having a break tag. And then we will be having a H2 heading. And we will align it in the center position. So we will give a align attribute to it center. And then we can just write here inside it we will be having an anchor tag href attribute I will provide as hash symbol so inside this anchor tag I will write a simple text which is full calendar integration with PHP and MySQL that's it so after this we just need to create a break tag after this heading and then we just need to create a div with a class container so inside this class we will be having a div which will be having a calendar div that's it so this is all the html which is required here so now we just need to create the custom script file so after the head here we just need to create this custom script file that's it. So inside this custom script file, we just need to call the jQuery document.getReady function. So when all the function elements are loaded, we just need to create this function. So here we will be making a variable of calendar is equal to and then we will be targeting that uh, calendar div with the ID which is calendar here which I have you can see that this has the ID of calendar so I am just targeting this and then I will be inv invoking this full calendar library by calling this function full calendar so inside this it, it takes some options here so first option it takes is edit table to true so it means that it can be uh, updated it can be edited after that it takes a header so this is the object so it the first option is left position so it takes three options that is previous next and uh, the third option is today put a comma and there is no comma out there after next today and the sec second option is center and this takes title and the third option will be right and it takes month comma agenda week comma agenda day so these are the three options it takes so after defining the header put a comma and we have the events so whenever this uh, ca full calendar is loaded we need to call this load.php so it will be loading all the events so we will create this file later on so just write this and then we have the selectable selectable to true so we can just select any kind of events to in this full calendar and then there is an option which is select helper which is also true so this is the last property that's it so this is the minimal code which is required to initialize this library so
if I just refresh now by going to localhost slash full calendar if I refresh you will see that guys it has got the text title full calendar integration it is a hyperlink it is not going anywhere and this is a calendar you can just have your select the today's date you can just view it monthly wise weekly wise and also day wise so this is a calendar that we will be working upon if I click it I need to add event so now basically guys we will be adding events in the calendar here so just uh, put a comma after the select helper and we will be having this select event so whenever we select the calendar we will be executing this callback function which takes three arguments first is the start date and second option will be the end date and this third argument will be all day so this is a function a set of curly brackets first of all we will grab the title by creating the title variable and uh, we will be prompting the user so this is a prompt method so here I will pass here enter event title something like this so when the user enters the title I will check that if it is not null so if it is not null I need to have a start variable so which will be equal to dollar dot full calendar dot format date and here in this we will be passing three arguments first is a start date and the second argument will be in double quotes which will be y dash y for year and mm for month and dd for day so if i just show you after this we will be having the time so which will be hh for hours colon mm for small mm for minutes and small ss for seconds so this is the start time we have grabbed here so similarly i will copy paste it for the end time also so and uh, i will be having the second argument which is end here so similarly we will be having this y m m d d h m m s s so this is the end date and now the third argument we need to be having to pass this data in an ajax request so we will write here dollar dot ajax so inside it first of all we will provide the url so inside we will be calling the script that it insert dot php so type will be post because we will be posting the data and the actual data that we will pass here is in we will be passing the data first of all the title comma start and comma end date so these are three arguments that we will pass here inside and after this we will be having our success function success so whenever the request is accepted we will be executing this function so first step we will take is to initialize calendar dot full calendar and there is a option here we need to write here refetch events so this arguments you need to pass here and also I will display alert to the user that uh, added successfully this is optional but this is good for the clarity that this event is added successfully if I control s you can see that the code is now looking good so now we just need to make this insert.php file so this will be the php code which is required in order to insert into the database so first of all we need to make the connection so for that we will make a new variable connect and we will write new pdo so we will be making use of php data objects so first of all i will pass mysql host is equal to so this will be localhost db name will be my database name which i has provided here if i see what is the database it is full calendar so i will write here full calendar and after this we need to provide the username 
which is root and password is null so this is the connection so now we will check that if the connection is ready or I don't want to check the connection I can simply just check that if all the values are properly set by using this code dollar post title so if the title of the event is there we just need to insert it so first of all I will be having the query I will write this query which is insert into the table name which is events and then I will provide the column name which is title start event end event this is a column names and now I will be providing the actual values that I need to insert first is the placeholder value I will give a colon title colon start event and end event so I'll, uh, now I need to just bind these values in the next step so I can just write query bind param or I can just make use of a prepared statement so after this I can just have a statement variable and then I can just use connect prepare and pass the query that I have written here that's it so now I just need to execute the query which is statement execute so inside this we need we just need to first of all provide the values so you can just have on multiple lines so we will provide an array here so inside this array I will provide my values first will be title so we will initialize the placeholder values that is I given here colon title so title will be equal to dollar post title of the event and comma the next value will be colon start event so this will be dollar post start event and similarly we will be having end event also so dollar post end event so that's it so just put a semicolon here right at the last here and now one thing I forgot that uh, in the table just change the this column from name to title so it is very simple if you go to structure here select this field here it was previously named as name here so just select this click on change and just rename it to title so I have already done that so just save this table and now if I refresh my application and click on a date here so you will see that it is popping up enter event title let me just uh, say holy and if I click OK nothing will display here because we are not loading any kind of events here but if I check the database hopefully this will be inserted if I browse here mm, this is full calendar inside we are full calendar here it is not inserted let me just see insert into events title start event so this was the error guys which was coming here the dollar post this is not start event this is start only so just rename it to start and also for this is not end event it is only end because here we are passing here these values here let me show you title start end so we just need to receive it also here so just make this change and now if I refresh the application and hopefully if I add a event holy and click OK and if I check the database hopefully this entry will be added uh, guys uh, the second error was <laughs> that in index.php we are writing here start here in both times here you can see that start start so this time we need to write here end because this is the end date so just make this simple change and now the application will work 
and uh, if I refresh the application and hit this uh, button and if I add a title or event holy if I OK and now if I check the database hopefully it will be added in the database so you will see that it has taken the title holy and it has taken the current date and time start event and end event and now we will be uh, updating deleting and displaying this event inside the calendar so now basically guys we will be displaying the all the events which is there in the database so we have this file which have which are there in the events load.php so we will be creating this file here load.php so the very first thing that we need to do is to have the connection to the database so just write the php blocks and again create the connection variable so i can just copy paste this line from this insert.php this line is same here so i can just copy paste this line paste it and now i just need to have uh, the data which will be an array for now and after declaring this variable we will be writing our query which will be a very simple select query so this will be select star from followed by the table name which is events and we will be ordering the result by id so id is unique for every uh, field so it is a primary key so we will be ordering it by it and then we will be creating the statement and using the connect method connect variable and we will be using the prepare and passing the query that's it so we are using the prepared statement and the next step is to execute it so simple statement execute that's it and now we just need to get the result in associative form so just declare a new variable result and call this method statement fetch uh, fetch all because we need to fetch all the events which are there inside the database so fetch all and then we are running a for each loop for each inside it we will pass our result and we will write as row so this is an index variable so inside double curly brackets we will be having our data array initializing it to the array here so just initialize it to array inside this array we will be having the id we will display the id which is uh, row we will pass the column name which is id the second field will be the title of the event which is simply be row title comma the start event will be simply be the row start event start colon event and uh, similarly we will be having the end event which will be row end event that's it so just put t here so this is has all the values here so lastly put a semicolon here now we just need to uh, push this array into our index.php file so to for pushing it in a json format it is very easy we just echo out json in code we will use this method and pass our array which is sorry data which is the array which contains all the values that's it now we just don't want to make any kind of changes here so now if i go back to the application and refresh and uh, hopefully i will see some change so you can see that one entry has been there inside the database and after if i save this file and uh, insert we have successfully inserted it and now if i refresh this so now after making this change you will see that all the events will be printed out if i refresh the application you will see that these are the events which are printed out if i now want to insert any kind of event click ok then you will see that it is popping out here and also if i check the database if i refresh it so these values will be present inside the database also so just see four values are there so which are printing out so now we are successfully inserting and displaying the records now we just need to update and delete this sorry guys i have committed a mistake here i have forgotten to put a dollar sign inside you can see that that was the error which was coming so put a dollar sign 
on four of these equations and now if you refresh the, your application you will see the so now guys I will be implementing the delete functionality here so if I click the button here I need to remove this uh, event from here so this will be prompting the user to delete, delete this event so right here inside your index.php put a comma here and now we will be binding this event click so when someone just click on the calendar here so this callback function will execute so inside double curly brackets we will be first of all be asking the user in the if condition so this is a confirm method so you can just pass a, any kind of string to it let me just pass that are you confirmed to remove it something like that question mark and then we can just check that uh, if the user has selected yes or not so depending upon that we will be having our id variable and then we will be grabbing event that is passed inside this function event.id and depending upon that response we will be making a ajax request so the url is very simple so url will be delete.php so this is a script delete.php and the method will be post and the data we need to pass is the id of the selected event so in curly brackets we can just pass the id and lastly we will be having a success callback function here this is a callback function and here we can just uh, execute our full calendar method that is refetch events after ex uh, deleting the event we can just alert the user that event got deleted so this is not mandatory but uh, just for the sake of this application we are doing that that is event got deleted so now the this uh, the javascript part is complete now we need to make this delete.php script so delete.php so inside this php script we need to have our php tags so the very first thing that we need to do here is that we need to make the connection so i can just copy paste from load.php so as this will be same so just copy paste it and uh, first and the foremost thing we need to check if uh, the id has been set so we will be checking that if it is set so just call this function is set and inside it pass the id variable so if it is set then we need to execute this instruction so first of all make the connection to the database and uh, secondly we just need to write a simple query which is the delete query so delete from followed by the table name which is in this case events and there is a where condition so where id is equal to the placeholder value that we will provide here of id so in the next step i will be binding this id with the actual id which is coming so but before that we need to use the connect variable to prepare the statement so inside it just pass the query and then we can just execute the query by calling statement execute so inside this we can just pass the id which was there so this will be colon id and this is equal to the actual id that we are receiving in dollar post so that's it so this is a php script for us so now hopefully if i refresh the application i will be seeing that if i hit on the actual event if i hit the event you will see you will see that it is generating this dialog box that are you confirmed to remove it and there is two options ok and cancel if i press cancel it will not delete it if i again press it if i click the ok button and it will saying that event got deleted so you will see that the event has deleted and if i check the database also now you will see that there will be three records and if i again press this delete it If I delete all the records 
and if I check the database you will see that it will be empty so now the delete functionality is also working so now the last and the last functionality that we need to implement is the update so if we uh, want to update the event we can also do it so this will be doing this in the next tutorial so now in this tutorial guys we will be having the update functionality the very last functionality of this application so for update we have two events that we need to tackle so the first event is event resize so just write this event and whenever it happens we will be executing this callback function which will take this event in the function and first of all we just need to grab the start and the end dates of the calendar so we just want to just copy paste this lines here so this will be remain the same for so just copy this lines here and paste it here so this will be the starting date and the ending date so after taking this we will be having our we have to grab the title of the event so for that just create a new variable title and get the title by event or title and then we just need to grab the id also by event dot id so on on which so id will be unique so that we can just update the event accordingly so after getting these values we just need to make a ajax request so dollar ajax so inside this we will be first of all be providing the url so this will be update.php and method will be again post as al always so and thirdly we will be having our data object so we just need to pass some data to the script so the first value will be the start date which will be start second will be end date and and the third date will and the third value will be id so id we will provide so this three information that we are providing to the script and lastly we will be having the callback so whenever the script is returning some data to the to this file so we will be just be alerting the user first of all that uh, update completed some message like this and also we will be calling this uh, calendar dot full calendar so inside this we will again write this line that is refetch events so that's it so now this first event is complete and now we just need to copy paste this whole code for the event drop so as i already told you this takes two events so we just need to copy paste this whole code here and after that put a comma here paste it and now the event will change to from event resize to event drop because for updating let me just tell you why it is taking two events because for updating we are dragging and dro dropping uh, this event so that is why it is taking two events so we need to tackle these two events separately so the code will remain the same so this is done for the index.php now we just need to create the update.php script which will handle the database part for us so so the first and the foremost thing we need to just check if the data has come up but before that we just need to create a variable connect for that i can just copy paste this line which will actually connect to the database so paste this line here at the top and now we can just check with the is set function dollar post so inside this we can just check the id if the id has been set successfully then we just need to write a simple query so as this time this will be update query so the syntax is very easy update the table name which is events and after that we need to set the values so this first of all will be title and we need to set to the placeholder value that i will provide secondly this will be start event this will be equal to the placeholder value start event and lastly we have the end event 
so this will be equal to end event so after providing these values we need to have a where condition so where id is equal to we have provided the id also we are receiving this id in the dollar post and after this we just need to have the statement variable and we just need to call the prepare method so inside this pass this query and now we just need to call the execute method on this statement execute so inside this we need to provide the values on the placeholder values so this will be an array so the first value was title of the event so this is a placeholder value so this title placeholder will be actually be equal to the title that we are receiving by dollar post title put a comma and on the next line we will be having our start date of the event which will be start event and this will be equal to dollar post start event and lastly we will be having our end event so colon end event so this will be equal to dollar post end event so now we have successfully and uh, last thing which is remaining we also need to provide the id also so colon id is equal to the dollar post id that's it so now this update script is also complete so this concludes the application now hopefully if i refresh it the application it will have the update functionality also so now if i drag 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 drop first of all we need to enter a event so now you will see that it is added successfully if i hit it to remove it you will see that it will also remove this it is got removed here so if i check the database you will see that one entry is there so it is displaying this entry on the calendar here so now if i refresh the application uh, this is the event which you can see that on the calendar so if i drag drop onto a different date you will see that the event got updated and if i click click on a certain date this uh, prompt me to enter the name of the event so i write the event so you will see that the event got added successfully and if i click the event you will see that if i click ok the event will be removed so this is a kind of a crud application that we have made in this uh, tutorial full calendar integration with php and mysql the whole source code source code was there in the video description also you can just visit the blog codingsiksha.com and you will get the full source code and also Please hit the like button, subscribe the channel and I will be seeing you in the next video.